My name is Mary Jane. For the last 13 years I've lived in a tent with my family and enough is enough. <laughs> Today I shall go into the bush and put up a yurt that I built 17 years ago, a tiny one, and make it my own space. It's going to be a secret place. I'm not even going to tell the children where I am. Somewhere over there, there's a gap made by deer in the hedge, and that's where I'm going. Here's the gap. Might not be possible to walk backwards down here. <laughs> so here we are. Yesterday, I cleared a bit of space in this blackthorn hedge. Um, the yurt is four metres across, and I uh, have some nice oak trees here. And this is going to be my little secret home. So far so good. Will I get it up by tonight? When I made this yurt, I specially made it light enough so that I could completely put it up myself. So I can actually pick up all of the roof holes in one go. Ta da! That's the whole roof. And I can do the same with the the whole of the wall. This is the whole of the wall. I can also pick it up in one armful on my own. <laughs> Ta -da! Sometimes it's just really nice to be able to do something completely yourself, isn't it? And not have to ask a strong man to come and do it for you. <clears throat> so, um, my family and I lived in this yurt full time for almost four years. It's four metres across. And um, that was a while ago now. And the only way that I can really remember how to put it up and which way round it all goes is seeing these stickers that my children have stuck on the walls. So I know, okay, this must be the inside of the wall and it must be this way up because probably they would put butterflies the right way up. Looking good. Seeing the yurt up again, even to this extent, I can't really express to you, like, I built this 16 years ago when I had my boy, my first child, and this yurt meant freedom. I would prefer to live in a tent to afford to have the time with my young family than to live in a lovely house with running water and all those things in exchange for doing some job and my time for the money oh <laughs> and now I'm putting it up as um, like a monthly retreat place for me and I've almost got to the stage of going utterly mad if I don't do it. And yeah, onwards. Another little word about the roof. You know, I said um, 
I really wanted to do it so I could do it all myself. Normally a yurt, there are two um, vital things about a yurt structure. Um, well, it normally has a tono, like the circle bit at the top where all the roof poles go into. Oh, I can, I don't know how I could make this. Probably I could and probably my husband could, but I didn't want to ask and mainly I didn't want to wait. <laughs> so I managed to find this other really cool design and that's what I've made. It's all one piece, it's a bit like an umbrella. I'll show you now. Watch carefully, I'm going to put it up. The second crucial bit is the tension band. Holds the top of the wall together so that the weight of the roof doesn't push the wall out. So here's the design of the roof, very beautiful and perfectly doable. <laughs> this is probably actually my favourite stage of the yurt, I find it so beautiful in its form without the cover. The cover is actually um, very tatty. It's not going to look very glamorous, <laughs> but it's going to be my space and I don't need a lot of stuff, I just need a space. I'm going to have some sheepskin rugs, my duvet, a candle, some books, my journal, and fire outside, lots of water. What more could you want? So shutting myself in now. just been blessed by a huge green dragonfly that came and flew all round the inside of the yurt looking in detail at the whole wall and then came and examined me and the camera <laughs> and Mr McNook. Maybe it thinks that the blue gram sheet is a pond. We've entered the space that already belongs to many creatures. There are many animal tracks here. I found a badger's skull, a badger's skeleton a couple of days ago. Um, there's for sure deer living in here, foxes, all kinds of other creatures I don't even know the names of. And I'm moving in with them. And it is a presumption on my part to cut things and find a space. And to feel that I'm entering a space where already so many live. So treading gently. So it's up with the help of my husband <laughs> and a broom. <laughs> there it is, my uh, humble little retreat place. Let the adventure begin.